Hello, it is Thursday, June 16th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. Now, yesterday, I had mentioned at the beginning of the video that there was a comment from FlogChamp in the um, Daily Solve Discord chat server describing yesterday's puzzle as delightful. And today, that same community member has described today's puzzle as quite the epitome of a Thursday puzzle with its cleverness. And there was a chorus of agreement in the um, Discord chat community. Uh, so I think we're probably in for an excellent Thursday puzzle today. And I read those comments. I did not read any of the spoilered bits, of course. Um, I read those comments before I saw the authors of this puzzle. And it has been constructed by Parker Higgins and Ross Trudeau. And Ross Trudeau is an extremely experienced uh, crossword constructor who I think, um, in my view, is he sort of specializes in very clever themes. So that's no surprise at all. Parker Higgins is a, is a debut constructor. But in any case, um, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself, aren't I? This, um, what am I saying? Uh, this edition of The Daily Solve uh, has been brought to us by Overfull Hitbox, Dan Stoko, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster and the invaluable Timothy Mark. So thank you so much to the four of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for bringing us this edition of the Daily Solve, this epitome of a Thursday, potentially. And if you'd like to join their ranks and get access to the uh, Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug as a benefactor, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve. And of course, if you become a patron at any level, you will get access to all of the... Um, bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. And you'll also get an extra extra channel in the Daily Solve Discord chat server, most of which, however, is free, including the bits where people have been discussing these puzzles yesterday and today. All right, um, let's get on to this solve, this um, much anticipated solve, much anticipated by me for the last five minutes anyway. Uh, so as I said, it's a Thursday puzzle. It was constructed by Parker Higgins and Ross Trudeau. Ross Trudeau has done dozens and dozens of New York Times crosswords in the past. Um, Parker Higgins, like I say, is a debut constructor. I recognize the name, some sort of, I don't know, internet person who, who has, I think, something to do with sort of maybe inter internet kind of speech and copyright law, that sort of thing. Anyway, um, let's solve the crossword. Are we ready to start solving? I say yes. Good or bad vacuum review? <laughs> I wonder if this is just the word sucks. <laughs> um, that's my guess. Let's look down. Yes, Luke to Darth Vader. Apologies for the spoiler, but he is Darth Vader's son, as it turns out. Uh, a catering vessel could be an urn. You could have a coffee urn. Facts first, sloganeer. Um, I'm not sure, but in three letters starting with a C, maybe CNN, which is a, a news network in the U.S. Oh, and look at this. We have, well, this is clearly thematic. I wonder if this entire clue will somehow be ends for some reason. But let's look at this. But it seems like you hate the idea. Or not, you might say. Oh, we should solve this crossword. Oh, but it seems like you hate the idea. We should solve this crossword or not. But I can't imagine that being a, a realistic scenario. Hawaiian coffee, Kona coffee is a, a coffee um, from Hawaii. So it really does look like this is going to be nothing but ends. Wow. Oh, maybe not though, because this this certainly won't have an N. Features of some beach houses. Um, beach houses. I'm not sure, but that doesn't look like it's going to be an N after that T, does it? What about this? Some strays. Animals, I don't know. Let's just keep solving. Psych up to rev up, maybe, or to amp up. Because psych up, I think, um, suggests interacting with a person as opposed to, say, a vehicle if you were revving it up. Although I guess you could use that metaphorically as well. Features in some houses of worship. Apses, perhaps? Now, apps, <laughs> I think I mentioned solving a difficult cryptic crossword yesterday. Actually, this particular word came up in the listener crossword I'm still trying to solve. If you're ever solving a cryptic crossword and you're looking, you think you need maybe a part of a church, it is almost certainly an apps. Um, it's not always. Sometimes it's just maybe the letters C H for church, but often it is an apps. 
New York City store with 1.2 plus million square feet of retail space. Wow. That must be Macy's, the department store. Okay. Well, hmm. Maybe one of these is wrong because I really would have expected there to be duplicate letters here. Or at least another four in the way we have four N's. So maybe one of these is wrong. Something that's asked. And a round figure. Mm, I don't know about any of this, sorry. I, just because of the way the theme is panning out, I'm just not I'm not very confident. Provides a hideout for maybe a bets, perhaps. A bets someone in a crime, assists them in a crime. That's a gold dang lie. Uh, lunch orders often served hot. BLTs, perhaps? Bacon, lettuce, tomato sandwiches? I don't know, that doesn't really seem... A biblical patriarch with a two-syllable name, Eli. Full frontal with Samantha B. error. I think this has come up before. I think it's TBS, um, Television Network in the United States. And stand-up comics material. Um, stand-up comics material. A set, right, a comedy set. Okay, so I suppose this, sorry, this isn't, I was wrong. These aren't all going to be repeated letters because the, these are, I'm more confident about these. Well, imagine that. I'll be, maybe this is BLTs. Lunch orders often served hot. Okay, fair enough. I suppose you could serve a BLT hot or cold. That's a gold dang lie. So the, that gold dang really suggests sort of rural slang or some kind of dialect. Um, ain't so, maybe? It isn't so? One, okay, anyway, I haven't actually looked at this. One performing a palm print analysis. Um, a, a palm print analysis. Some kind of scientist? Oh, actually, I can probably reintroduce... Yes, I can reintroduce these answers. They were correct after all. Um, something that's asked. Round figure. Some strays. Something else? Three fighters at the OK Corral Earps. Wyatt Earp and company. I don't remember the other the other Earps. Of a sort of Western Western US legend. I mean reality as well. One's playing cornhole, e.g. I think that's a game where you toss things. I only learned about this in the last several years, I think. Um Clergy, metaphorically. Metaphorically, I don't know, shepherds or what? Uh, what's the metaphor? Features of some beach, oh, stilts. Some beach houses are indeed on stilts. Okay, what is this? <laughs> Forensic scientist, four ends. Look at that, very clever. Forensic scientist. That isn't, this is, I can see why someone would consider this to be a, uh, an emblematic Thursday puzzle. Alley cats. Some strays are alley cats. There we go. Something that's asked. A price. Ah, uh, yes. What, what's your price? What are you asking? And round figure is a par, is par, right? Okay, so a round of golf, for instance, you want to, to make the par number of strokes. Okay, ah, uh, clergy metaphorically the cloth, right? A man of the cloth, a man of the clergy. There we go. Wedding speech opener. A toast? maybe. Thin, unhealthy looking sort. I'm not, not completely certain about this A here, so let's keep looking. Treats usually served in miniature cups. Espressos? or It's not really a treat. Um, miniature cups. Pizzeria supplies. Right. Um... I'm not sure. To be up against. And then here we have country bumpkins or hicks. And this is just too much. I can't even, in the kind of modern language. Adorable sweethearts. P 
Boy, I wish I could just jump straight to these, but I don't seem to be able to, do I? Um, stand guard is to keep watch. No, it's not. Oh, no, it is. I just spelled it incorrectly. Fumbled it a bit. Something used to improve one's English. A, a cue. Ah, I think this refers to, I don't actually know the etymology of this, but English in sort of snooker or pool or, or billiards is um, when you put spin on the ball in a certain way. I don't know enough about it to really explain it in detail, but it's something to do with putting spin on a ball. And so I guess a cue, you'd use the actual cue, cue stick to do that. Um, okay, so this this they don't so all of the theme answers don't necessarily start with several letters, so that's good to know because these these are both surely correct. Down could be eight. Oh, cute. Uh, and then adorable sweethearts. Starting with cute seems plausible. Tree in the etymology of gin, the juniper tree. Oh no, it isn't. It's cutie, I guess. Uh, juniper tree, um, related to the der the Dutch uh, Jennifer, and then that becomes gin. Okay, college initials on both the East and West Coasts. University of something. Worries, you worry about something, you stew about it, so worries, stews. Bailout button, as as is often claimed in the United, in the, not in the United States, in the um, New York Times crossword, the escape key is apparently a bailout button, although I don't find that to very frequently be the case in modern software. First aid item, an ice pack, perhaps. So is this cutie pies? What? Oh, three eyes, cutie pies. Is that what this is? Factory, no, it's not. Factory vessel. It's more likely a vat than a vit. Uh, dot, 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 equivalent would be etc. Oh, cutie patootie. Wow, that's much more clever than cutie pies. Uh, cutie patootie. So we really are sticking with that number, the numbered letter format. Wow, that's very clever. Cutie patootie. <laughs> Look at that. And nth degree, uh, to the nth degree, you might say. All right. Man is one. Presumably not an isle, which would be a sort of corruption of no man is an island, which I erroneously entered into yesterday's puzzle momentarily. Man is one. Oh, well, but there is actually, in fact, an isle of man. <laughs> Sorry. There, I mean, yes, I'll, off the coast of England. Um, so there we go. Okay, Florida has some. Uh, Florida has some keys, the Florida Keys, right? Another geographical answer there. Singer Gorm. I don't think I know that. High number. High number with a question mark. So there's some sort of pun going on here. Yodel. Yes, a number in the sense of singing, a song. And you will, you will yodel high in the Alps. Okay, solver of this puzzle. Is it you? according to the crossword. So in other words, me or us. In a lather say could be sudsy. By the way, actually, sorry, I know I keep saying this, but that's another thing to keep in mind with cryptic crosswords. Sometimes you'll see a word like setter or author in a cryptic clue. And often that will mean I, because it's referring to the actual or the name of the setter. You might actually have to look at the name of the person who set the crossword. And that would be then the, the wordplay that you're entering into the grid. Anyway, um, singer Gorm, I don't know. Event goers. I'm not sure. It'll have something to do with these Ds. And book smart and dumb and dumber, e.g. Those are comedies? Um, film comedies? It's a little too general, I would think. Um, core assets, abs, maybe, is in your core. Uh, bro comedies? 
Not really sure. Uninspiring. Um, so-so, maybe? Event go right. Here's the event goers. We'll come back to that. Sunny and share, e.g. Um, a pop duo, right? Two singers, a pop duo. There we go. Uh, hassle is, I don't know, a pain, I suppose. Tots up adds up numbers. Informal term of affection. Um. Not actually sure. Blank car series. I don't know. Now the car series is capitalized, so that makes me think this is, you know, this is a brand name or a product or something. I don't think I know it though. Uh, Cassis cocktail would be Cure. It's a cocktail uh, made with uh, Cassis. And so, what is this? Indie. Oh, this, sorry, this says bud comedy. Buddy. Usually it's buddy, isn't it? So I must it must not be comedies. Sorry, anyway, we'll get back to that. And, oh, so that, I see. That's why I had this wrong. This, this doesn't end with comedies. So informal term of affection is kiddo. Oh no, what is going on here? Event goers. Oh, interesting. Are there two sets of Ds? Event goers. Boy, I don't know. Oh, maybe the Indie Car Series, indeed. So this will be a 40-something or a 5D-something or a 60 event goers. Attendees. Attendees. Oh, my goodness. This is preposterous. What What a good puzzle. Okay, leads as a D&D &D campaign. Does, do's? One way to be missed. You could be sorely missed. Singer Gorm ED, ID, is that a name? Uh, TiVo, EG, is a, a DVR, isn't it? A digital video recorder, perhaps? I think that maybe means. Um, common scat syllable. Do is in sort of doo-wop or doobie doo, that sort of thing. So what? Oh, it's simply buddy movies. Okay, fair enough. Buddy movies. Leads as a D&D &D campaign, DMs, ah, that's uh, for dun dungeon, dungeon Masters. And then I think we did actually see everything else. Okay, great. So this is all taken care of. Boy, I can't believe this. Attendees, look at that. Attendees, that's it. It's just excellent. Okay, this is, by the way, exactly the sort of thing that Ross Trudeau excels at. If you follow him on Twitter, you'll see him post this sort of idea all the time. Okay, thin, unhealthy looking sort. A waif, perhaps? Essence of a good roast. Wit, perhaps, if you're using roast in the metaphorical sense to mean um, sort of good naturedly insulting somebody. Okay, treats usually served in miniature cups. I, all right, I don't know. Trochee's counterpart could be an iamb. So, a tro trochee and an iamb are each example of uh, sort of metrical units of poetry. poetry. Like an iamb is the um, unstressed followed by a stressed syllable. That that unit of um, poetic meter that it, that uh, comprises most of Shakespeare's work, for instance. Okay, one of the pounds of a pound cake. Oh, right, I learned this recently. I think due to the crossword. So a pound cake is a pound of flour, a pound of butter, and a pound of sugar, and a pound of eggs. I already forget the very simple uh, recipe for pound cake. I'm sorry. The Big Bang Theory role. I've never seen the Big Bang Theory, but a name in three letters that starts with R and ends in J must be Raj, I would think. Grain. Uh, grain. Not one grain, not one iota, perhaps. To be up against something is to abut it, literally, to be literally up against it. So it probably is iota. Oh, it, Italian ices, maybe. Treats usually served in miniature cups. There we go. Um, so it turned out it was Italian. I said espresso before, which was completely wrong. But another Italian thing, I suppose. I don't know. Is Italian ice Italian? You never know. Maybe it is. Repeated Warhol subject. Can. The uh, Campbell's soup can, I assume that means. Actress Tomei. Oh. 
Is it not Cam? I know of Marissa Tomei. Is there another Tomei? Maybe I'll delete this because I'm not sure. I'll take that as a no. Setting for the memorable cable car scene in Moonraker. Um, I haven't seen Moonraker in, I mean, literally decades. Uh, I don't remember. Is it Rio de Janeiro, maybe? Rio? Actually, that would make sense because we're probably going to have quite a few O's. So pizza, re- oh, tomatoes, tomatoes, eight O's are the pizzeria supplies. Excellent. Okay. I think we've, I think we've finished off our theme. So let's just close out the puzzle. Repeated warehouse subject. Oh, is it Mao? German Mao? Yeah. So this is Marissa Tomei after all. Desktop array could be icons on a computer desktop. Setting of 2019's Parasite, the excellent film Parasite was set in Seoul, South Korea. And uh, if we are together, we are as one, and a sister is a nun. So a sister is sort of our counterpart to the man of our man of the cloth up there. And there we go. We have solved a Thursday crossword, as it says. What a brilliant theme! I absolutely agree with uh, those from the Daily Solve Discord chat server. This is the epitome of a Thursday puzzle. Um, so our uh, our professional performing a palm print analysis is a forensic scientist, forensic scientist. Um, our pizzeria supplies are tomatoes. Uh, let's see. Our event goers, our, our attendees, this one is just unbelievable. It's only a single other letter in addition to the repeated ones. And to make a three-syllable word with that, attendees, um, and was that it? Is that all we had? I think that was it. What a brilliant, clever crossword. Sorry, I just want to make sure I didn't miss any others. I don't think I did. Uh, I thought there was one with two of something. Maybe not. I'm just going to browse through here. Sorry, I don't know why I'm doubting myself at the moment. Yes, I did miss one. Cutie patootie. Yes, that's actually, I think, the other most impressive one. Doing, Creating such an unusual, almost nonsense sounding word out of um, using this mechanism with just, just this one extra T after the rest of the word spelled normally is quite impressive, I think. Cutie patootie. That is just unbelievable. That That, I think, is the most impressive one. And attendees is just the most hilarious for being a completely pronounceable clue made up of 11 letters, 10 of which are the same consonant. So anyway, uh, what what a great, just what a great Thursday puzzle and not, not too brutally challenging for a Thursday either. It's just a very fun solve and what a ridiculous and well-executed conceit. So well done, Parker Higgins and Ross Trudeau. So with that having been solved, we've solved that epitome uh, of the Thursday. Now let's get on to some clues from yesterday's puzzle. Um, I'm trying to see here. What should I read? Okay, yes. I'll I'll start with this because this is relevant to the theme. It's related to yesterday's theme. Joe Sichterman says, if my previous comments haven't totally given me away, I'm a sucker for some interesting etymology. I am as well. So thank you for that. I was curious how those two words with very different meanings, stationary and stationary from yesterday's um, puzzle, which differ only in the um, letter in the third from right position. The third third to last letter is either an E or an A. Um, I was curious how these two words with very different meanings came to be spelled almost identically. I learned today they both come from the same root word where we get the word station from Latin. Stationary, meaning to stand still, came into English around the 14th century and roots pretty directly back to the Latin word statio or statio, statio, meaning in a fixed position. Separately, about 300 years later, there came came a need in English to differentiate between salespeople who traveled, that is traveling salesmen, and merchants who sold from one spot. And the English word we settled on was a stationer, Books were one such thing a stationer would sell, and stationary originally meant what a stationer sells. That morphed through history from the general term to the modern stationary, probably closely closely described as paper products. Now that that is amazing. It makes perfect sense as most 
uh, well, most etymology either makes perfect sense or is completely arbitrary and really only has anything to do with the way that the mouth naturally forms a sound. That's the other big category of etymology. Um, but anyway, uh, thank you so much for that explanation. That is absolutely, uh, that's absolutely fascinating, very relevant to yesterday's puzzle. All right. Um, Ike Alele says, for 31 Down, the phrase tutti frutti is both the song made famous by Little Richard, as mentioned, as well as a common ice cream flavor. Uh, it turns out the latter comes from the Italian for all the fruits, since it's kind of an indistinguishable, indistinguishable melange of fruit flavors. I only found out, I only found this out about two years ago. So thank you, Ike Alele. And I guess tutti e frutti, I guess, would be the Italian. Um, or or uh, sort of Alighted to tutti frutti. What if, <laughs> so that, that's just a, I guess, pretty much what I expected. Um, Henry Chandler says the hand in the Adams family is simply known as Thing, although his full name is Thing T Thing. I um, misremembered that character as being Cousin It. In fact, Cousin It, as Henry points out, is a creature covered in floor length blonde hair and speaks only in high pitched gibberish. So thank you for that correction. I apologize to both uh, Thing T Thing and Cousin It. And finally, GTDP explains, regarding Winnie the Pooh entering the public domain, it should be noted that this is solely A. A. Milne's original 1926 book, not any of his subsequent three books, nor any of the Disney adaptations. I guess we still have to wait a while for those. You'd now be fine making a work which is derivative of the first book, but if, for example, you dress your derivative poo in a red t-shirt and nothing else, or if you include Tigger or any other character who wasn't in the original book, you'd still get into legal hot water. Isn't copyright fun? <laughs> Indeed. Okay, that makes perfect sense. I didn't, uh, I wasn't aware of that subtlety, but that, uh, that makes sense based on my, um, admittedly relatively limited understanding of, of copyright law in the United States. So thank you for that clarification. And that's it for yesterday's puzzle. That's it for today's puzzle and today's video. Thank you for joining me. This was, I think, a very fun one. So um, if you did enjoy it, please do subscribe to the channel. And as I often don't say anymore, um, do pass this channel along to a friend if you think you know somebody who might enjoy this series. I very much appreciate that. Also, finally, speaking of things I rarely remember to mention, I'm also solving each day the daily wordle and the daily plus word, which is a sort of derivative of Wordle that consists of a five by five mini crossword grid that then when completed serves as a complete Wordle grid that you use to solve the final bit of the puzzle. Anyway, those are both up on the channel each day as shorts, 60 second videos or uh, 60 seconds or fewer, I suppose. Anyway, that's that. I'll be back tomorrow, of course, for the Friday puzzle. We will dispense with themes tomorrow for two days. And I hope you join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care.